Shortly after Israel became a nation again, it was in 1948 that Major Azil Gao started conceiving the idea of the Uzi 9mm. Placed into the Israeli Special Forces in 1956, the Uzi became a series of open bolt blowback operated submachine guns that eventually reached the battlefield on every continent on this planet. And there's a lot of things you probably know about the Uzi 9mm, but what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about 10 things you probably didn't know about the Uzi 9mm. Number one, the Uzi was the very first popular, widely sold throughout the world telescoping bolt submachine gun. A telescoping bolt is a cylinder bolt which telescopes around the barrel. This allows you to make the gun shorter, as well as this is an open bolt blowback design, which of course exposes the internals into the elements of sand and dirt, wind and rain. So the telescoping bolt will protect all the internals. Number two, the concept of the telescoping bolt originated in the Browning 1911, which similarly was the first gun which the slide acted as the barrel shroud and the bolt. This allowed for higher powered rounds in a much smaller package. Number three, the Uzi was not the very first telescoping bolt submachine gun made. In fact, it was CZ that produced the CZ-23 in 1948, which greatly inspired Azil Gal. It was the design of the CZ-23 being the very first reliable produced submachine gun out there that led Azil to realize that he could do the same thing. Number four, both the Uzi and the CZ-23 being produced shortly after World War II were both inspired by what was referred to as the Japanese Model II submachine gun. This machine gun was used by the Imperial Army. This Model II, when first encountered by U.S. forces, they didn't know what to call it. So it was dubbed the bullpup by U.S. Marines, essentially referring to its power and its size. Number five, Zeal Gao was born in Germany in 1923 under the name Gothard Glass. Being in Germany in the 30s and 40s was definitely not a good thing for a Jew. What Azil did was he eventually moved to the United Kingdom and then finally he settled in 1936 in Kibbutz in the British Mandate of Palestine. And when Israel was reborn as a state in May of 1948, Kibbutz played a major role in immigrating Jews and giving many employment as it was a massive farming community. It was after the reborn state of Israel and watching his town grow rapidly with Israeli citizens that Azil saw the need for advanced weaponry. Number six, that same year, now IDF officer Azil Gal saw what a submachine gun could do. Israel now being equipped with almost 3,000 British Stein submachine guns. They were small, but they were bulky compared to the Uzi. Number seven, shortly after retiring, Azil Gal moved to the United States. He didn't stop producing guns. He eventually took a job with Sturm Ruger and invented the Ruger MP9 9mm submachine gun. Number eight, 90 countries rapidly purchased the Uzis for their military and police making it the most sold submachine gun in history with over 10 million produced and still counting as IWI continues mass production of this weapon. Number nine, the United States Secret Service used the Uzi from 1962 to 1993. It was eventually replaced by the HKM-5 and the FN-90. Uzi's deployment by the Secret Service was on March 30th, 1981 during the assassination attempt of Ronald Reagan when Special Agent Robert Wanko pulled an Uzi out with a telescoping stock to protect the rear of the President's limo as it sped away. And finally, number 10, Azil Gal, otherwise known by friends and loved ones as Uzi, did not want it to be called the Uzi. He didn't want to take any credit for it. He specifically designed this gun to ensure the sovereignty of the Israeli state. And he didn't want the credit for it, but they named it the Uzi anyway. So there you go. There's your top 10 list of things you probably didn't know about the Uzi 9mm. If you like these types of videos, I put a top 10 things you didn't know about certain guns playlist below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. But by far the most important part of this YouTube channel is it's a ministry to us and we take prayer requests. So please don't really ever hesitate to send that stuff in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family and love guns.